All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Goldies from the previous video are doing good. Africans are doing good. Planter tanks doing solid. And of course, ooh, what happened there? Mm. <laughs> and of course, the South Americans are doing good. Today, we're not working on any of these tanks. We're actually doing some stuff on the 33 gallon below the 55. So let's get to it. So as you'll probably be aware, if you know what this thing is, you know what we're doing today. This is a tumbler for eggs. People use them for um, African cichlid eggs as well as um, plecos and, and that kind of thing. So we've actually got a female in this African cichlid blue neon breeder tank that's holding. So today we're gonna catch her out, strip the eggs from her. It's better for the mum in my opinion to do this that way the mum can get back to eating and that kind of thing and they don't have to go you know 20 to 25 days without eating because obviously that's not um, optimal or fantastic for the fish anytime you can just continue feeding them that's better for them so we're going to catch her out of there i think she's probably been holding for about 10 to 14 days at this point so i don't think they're going to be um straight up eggs uh, I've honestly not bred the Blue Neons in a while now, so this is the first batch that I'm actually going to um, keep. So we're going to catch her out real quick, obviously with the decorations in the tank. It's a little bit tricky, but we do get her, and here we go. Let's get to stripping the eggs. What you want to do when you catch this female, or what I tend to do, don't know if it's the easiest, if you do breed African cichlids and you've got an easier way of doing it, let me know in the comments. I usually just keep the net here on the top of the tank kind of on the rim then i'll go in there once she's caught with my hand and a little uh, safety pin almost i think it's a safety pin or like a hair clip it's a hair clip blue it's a hair clip anyway make sure that your hand is wet that way you don't take any of a slime coat if you do it when your hand is dry you've got you've got some issues there we're then going to just lift her up and just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna put one of the little hair clips right under that bottom lip. While she's in the water, we're then gonna open it up and the fry or the eggs, if you actually strip the female early enough, will just pop out of the female. If you gently rock her and almost rub your finger under the bottom of her jaw, that will sometimes entice her to release them quicker or release more if she's still holding some in there as well. After you've got them all, you can then put her back in the tank and she can now go about her business and start eating. As you can see here, we do have about 10 or 12 African cichlid fry. They do still have the egg sacs connected to them and it'll probably be that case for, by my estimation, is looking at them probably about five to seven days. So we are still gonna use a tumbler. They could probably swim at this point, but in all honesty, it's just easier to use a tumbler until the egg sac's completely gone off the fry, and then you can move them into a separate container, which is what I usually do. So we're then just gonna use a little cup, or in this case, I've got a little measuring cup, and we're just gonna slowly get the fry out of the net in some water and put them into the tumbler. Catching them in this manner is a little tedious, so I'm not gonna bore you with all that, but as you can see, we've got one in there. We're gonna continue getting the rest of his siblings and then we'll uh, take a look once they're all in the tumbler. All right, so we got them all and they're all in the base of this tumbler right now. Let's get this thing set up and then we can take a better look at them. The tumbler's just gonna gently rock them and put some airflow and some water current through there which is just gonna help them stay suspended and basically mimic their environment of what they've been used to in the mother's mouth we have done this previously and we've got a few little fry in there they're all just hiding up in that plant right now though so you can't really see them and here 
are the fry that we just got out of the mom. You can just about see them in the bottom of the tumbler. There's probably about 10 or 12 of them in there. And this just needs to be connected to an air pump with an airline tube in, plug it in and bing bang bosh. There you go. Unsure why that one's just cranking down from the top. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But these will now be fine for probably about seven days, 10 days. I'll basically leave them in there just until that egg sac that's protruding from the underside of the fish is all eaten up and that the fish basically absorbs that while they're growing once that's gone they're then going to be ready to eat so at that point we'll feed them really really fine flakes some fry food potentially works great i'll leave a link for that down in the description if any of you guys are currently breeding african cichlids i would highly advise it really does work well got some good airflow in there it's solid in structure and doesn't basically enable any of the breeding group and especially that male to mess with it or anything like that sometimes the cloth ones are, are really flimsy and I'm, I'm not a fan of those at all so definitely get yourself a plastic one if you've keep if you're keeping them with the, the breeding group or um any african cichlid show tank fish or anything like that during this stage um i also got another group of fry um while this video was going on as well obviously not while the video going on because I were editing it at the power of editing um, but during this time I did so my hope is to get those on the right um, growing out pretty quickly and then basically go with the ones on the left all in the same subsection of this tank males looking pretty solid right now that blue colors awesome on the face so that's the aim hopefully we're able to do that I don't think the size difference between the two groups is gonna be a massive factor so Hopefully uh, that will cause no issues when I eventually move them. So hoping to do that in a few weeks. And here is a few weeks later. Every single one of them are in this subsection of the 33 now that I just basically segregated off. And they are looking great. You can still see a little size difference from the younger ones to the older ones and, and the, the right from the left. But overall, everybody's doing great eating fantastic and I'm really looking forward to growing these guys out. I've got one horse in there who I think I'm definitely going to keep. I'll probably keep um, a few of the females too just to add to the breeding group um, and then I'll keep that uh, male as, as backup. Overall probably got about 30 so if you do live in the Pittsburgh area and you're interested in any of these once they get grown out fully please let me know. If not, they'll be going to my local fish store um, and you can buy them there. So 
Thanks for your time. I appreciate you watching and supporting the channel as always. If you've not subscribed and you've watched until this point, make sure you do down below. Plenty more videos coming like this one and plenty more coming from the fish room, whether that's on the goldfish, angelfish, planter tank, South American cichlids, aquascaping, and of course, African cichlids. So thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next video.